That bait right there is the universal fish catcher. That is a minnow style bait that works everywhere worldwide. That's a swim bait fish. It's a big one. I've got a fish on a swim bait here out deep. I'm just gonna keep putting pressure on him. He's trying to jump. I don't want him to throw it. I'm trying to keep his head down. <clears throat> because he's, I just wanna keep control of him. Oh, that's a good fish. And the swim bait's a pretty heavy bait, so I don't want him to come up and waller too much if I can help it. The main reason I got into throwing swim baits is just I want to catch big ones. These schools have sometimes have thousands of fish in them, and I only want I only care about five of them, and that's the five I care about. Five like that. <laughs> Real healthy fish. He bit it good. I mean, he knocked slack in the line, so I just kept reeling, reeled down until I was sure I was in good, tight tension with him and drilled on him. It's a fish. Oh, man. Pretty fish. So gutty. You can tell they're just gorging on big shad. They're used to eating baits that big. That's nothing for them. I mean, that's probably a lot smaller than what he normally eats. It looks big to us. It looks bigger than a crankbait but it's not that big to them. That's the forge they're used to. Let's get that fish back. Oh, let me show you this. Look down on that fish's throat right there. This fish has got one gigantic shad in his throat. I'm gonna try to get it out. He probably ain't happy about this, but I'm gonna get his lunch back from him. That's the size baits they eat right there. That was in his mouth and then he bit my spoon bait. That's why you fish spoons and giant swim baits right there. That's what they eat. They eat big baits on fisheries like this. Swim baiting originated really, I'd say, out west. You could maybe trace its roots back to, you know, simple baits like a sassy shad. But as far as throwing big swim baits to try to catch big bass, that definitely originated out in California. Um, you know, you had guys like Butch Brown and Matt Newman, Mike Long, but I kind of got into it. One, because of what I do for a living, writing articles and shooting videos, I got to work with all those guys. I spent a lot of time out in California actually getting to go swim bait fishing with them. It was interesting to me, just the dynamics of how big bass react differently than say your average two pound fish. Because those guys in those lakes they fish out there, they can actually see the fish and see how a bass reacts to those big swim baits. But for me, you know, I live on a highly pressured fishery that probably has more bass in it than most lakes in the United States. So for me, it got to be a, a game of, you know, how big a bait can you throw, knowing that they eat 12 and 14 inch gizzard shad to maybe get a six pound bite out of a school instead of 50 two pound bites. That's what got me into throwing big spoons and especially big swim baits. So I'm not as necessarily concerned about catching limits of fish as I am getting the big fish out of every school I hit. I mean, they make tons of different swim baits. They've got hard baits that suspend and float and, and sink and do all different things. You know, those have generally got treble hooks and stuff hanging on the bottom of them, which is no good for the way we fish. The scenario that I'm fishing, I, I'm fishing fish on, a, on the bottom in like 25 feet of water. So I, I use an exposed head for a couple reasons. They make swim baits that are molded in, you know, the swim baits actually molded around a heavy weight. Those are fine, but I, I found I can't feel the bottom as well. I can't feel the bait on the rocks without an exposed big head like that in front. It's an ounce VMC head with a Berkley Slim Shad on it. Uh, it's just about a six inch swim bait. It's real flexible. It's got a really good action. You know, the tail's got a lot of movement. I can crawl that thing at a real slow speed and know that my tail is still moving down there. You know, the bait itself's not gonna move a lot. It'll have a little bit of a roll to it. You know, so I'm winding it through where I know some fish are at that little tail kick and I'm just kind of scooting it along on the bottom. And what'll happen is it, you know, it, it'll, it's digging around on those rocks. It's kind of scooting it along. It'll hit a rock and it'll kind of catch for a second and pop off that and run. A lot of times that's what happens. I think that change of direction sometimes, not real abrupt change, just a real subtle change of directions is enough to get one to bite. As far as retrieving the swim baits, I'm trying to keep them pretty close to the bottom. I like to use a, you know, I use like a 6'4 to 1 reel with a big strong handle, something I can grip pretty easy. I'm just crawling the bait along essentially. I'm moving it, 
but I, I want to still feel it on the bottom. And if I kind of lose that contact with the bottom, I'll quit reeling, watch it hit, and then I'll start reeling again. Because, you know, I am fishing. You, the nice thing about a swim bait is you can catch suspended fish with it. But bass, when there's a bunch of them, they're competitive. It's usually because they're feeding. And when they're doing that, they're usually pinning the bait to the bottom a lot of times. I've got my rod tip pointed probably one o'clock. And usually what I want to do on, a, on an ideal setup, and obviously it depends on where you're fishing, but on an ideal setup, I've got it pointed about one o'clock, but I want a lot of space to be able to pivot and swing the rod, you know, when one bites. And the bite, I mean, usually you're just going to feel like a little tick. You know, you might feel a little jarring deal. But the thing is, you just got to condition yourself to just keep reeling. You know, don't, don't snatch when you feel that jerk. Cause a lot of times they'll come up and smack it without actually getting a hold of it. He's on there, he's hitting it. I don't know if they're testing it or trying to kill it or what they're doing, but I've had some that'll hit three or four times and if you'll keep reeling, you will finally get that fish. When I feel that bite, I'm reeling, I feel that tick, I just keep reeling and then as my rod just starts to load, then that's when I drive the hook as hard as I can. I want to, you want to feel a little bit of the weight of the fish before you swing. That lets you know he's, he's got the bait. He hasn't come up and hit it. He's actually got it and he's latched on. And then it's just, I mean, after that point, if you think it's a big one, there's, again, there's two schools of thought on that. One is you just get your rod down low and winch and don't ever let that fish get control. The other thought is you kind of play them easy, making sure they don't get pulled up to the surface. And then if they do try to come up and jump, then you're gonna you know, duck your rod down in the water, try to keep their head down, try to keep control of their head so they don't have a lot of room to sling back and forth. <clears throat> Got him. Yes. Mm, stay down. Nope, he's a little guy. Stoop. Came up, that was it. That was cool. That was, that was really cool. That was really cool. That was one of those where you've been sitting here listening for an hour and trying to put the, trying to put in application what you're hearing. And when it happens, oh man, it's like building a brush pile and put your and catching the first fish off of it. It's cool, man. If you want to catch big ones, you got to throw what they eat. Throw big baits. <laughs>